Crosstalk Module 4.5 In this module, we will look at electromagnetic field interaction with small electrical circuits. What we will see is approximate model for differential mode noise pickup by component leads, PCB tracks and connecting wires. The assumptions are that transmission line model is valid and incident field can be approximated as a uniform plane wave or in the far field of dipoles. So we are not talking of near field coupling in this. Even though as you will see the model that we come up is quite similar to the model that we have derived for near field inductive and capacity coupling. But in this case, it will be action of magnetic field and electric field. Previously, we have seen that uh, we can find maximum radiated field from electric dipole and magnetic loop. And maximum radiation is on a plane perpendicular to the dipole. And here the maximum radiation for a loop is in the plane of the loop. However, in the near field, maximum couplings are along the dipole length and perpendicular to the loop. So the problem that we have is somewhat different from the previous one. So here, assume that you have two wires, it can be component lead or PCB tracks with some loads at the end and you have a TEM wave incident, transverse electromagnetic wave in which electric field and magnetic field are in a plane perpendicular to the direction of propagation. Now the coordinate system is defined here x-axis, y-axis and uh, z coming out of the paper. So since it is TEM, we can separate the effect of uh, magnetic field and electric field. Then combine those effects by applying the superposition theorem. Now let us see the inductive coupling and Faraday's laws that we have seen before, uh, where we found that uh, EMF by the action of a magnetic field is given by the close line integral of E dot dl. And from this uh, we have come up with a model for magnetic field interaction as a series voltage source. However, in representing this model, we use the circuit parameter M because uh, we are in the near field. So we are talking of uh, mutual inductance and all. Whereas in the problem that we have now, we will be replacing the magnetic field created by this current I1 by the magnetic field component of the wave, of the TEM wave, and we will not be using the circuit parameter M. Similarly, for capacity coupling and using Gauss law, we found that uh, the surface integral of the total flux coming out is equal to the charge enclosed, and from there and from the definition of capacitance, we have come up with a model for electric field interaction as a current injection. Uh, however, uh, here we will not use this coupling capacitance. Instead, we will use uh, the electric field component of the wave for finding the, the model. So this is just a recap of uh, what we have seen before for the near field. So the strategy is uh, again 
it uh, model the magnetic field interaction by a voltage source but without involving the mutual inductance and uh, uh, modeling the electric field interaction by a current source but uh, without involving the coupling capacitance and as before CR and LS series uh, inductance and parallel capacitance can be neglected when these conditions are true when the impedance compared to the end impedance are meeting certain criteria and also we will not use uh, near field and far field anymore because it, does, it will not make any sense there is no near uh, near, sorry, near end and far end uh, in the problem that we are investigating now. So, this is the development of the model. So, you have a small component lead or transmission line with some loads. So, the incident wave and it is separated by a distance s. So it is in the y direction, y equal to 0 and small s. So let the magnetic field be going into the plane of the paper, incident field. So that will be equal to, because of this coordinate system, minus hz component. And incident electric field is in the y direction, the transverse field. So the normal component of the magnetic field, you take a small section of the line delta x, this is the x coordinate, so a small section of delta x, so you have an area enclosed, so the magnetic field is going through this area, so this will create a voltage from Faraday's law. So that voltage will drive a current in such a way that it should create a flux opposite to this. So the, the direction of the voltage source is like this. So this voltage source we write as if Vs is per unit length uh, induced EMF, then we multiply it by delta x because it is proportional to this delta x. So Vs delta x is a small elemental voltage source. Total surface area is given by the small s by delta x. So similarly, electric field interaction can be modeled like this. Suppose due to this uh, action, you have a charge separation, and integral of this uh, electric field will give you a voltage difference. Now this voltage difference is in series with uh, uh, the circuit capacitance. These are not coupling capacitance, so it is the capacitance between these two lines. So that can be converted into a current source, Is per unit length, and uh, multiplied by delta x, you will get this elemental current source. So this is the model for electric field interaction. So we will find how we can find this Is and Vx in the later view graph. So the magnetic field induces an EMF, a series voltage source. So surface integral of uh, rate of change of the flux. So if you take uh, this small elemental area and integrate along this area, you get an expression like this. B n is the incident uh, flux density and uh, integrating over that uh, small surface. That small surface area, you can get it as uh, delta x into 
small s if uh, h is uniform across but otherwise we can explicitly write it as an integral form so j omega mu zero surface integral of h ds Now ds is equal to delta x into delta y, delta y in this direction. So we are assuming that uh, the field is not uniform here. So we are taking a generic case, that's why we are doing this integral. So delta x then as y equal to 0 to s, you are integrating uh, h across y so this will be equal to a voltage times delta x so j omega mu zero integral zero to s h dy is the voltage source then delta x now electric field induced currents uh, uh, that will be the parallel current source. So that is given by so C times rate of change of voltage. So it is this equations we are writing. So instead of coupling capacitance, it is uh, this capacitance that we have here. So that is the only difference. So it is quite similar, even though an important difference is that this C here is the capacitance between these two wires and not the coupling capacitance as in the previous case. So since uh, uh, this is a positive and this is negative, but we assume the direction of the current upward we put a negative sign in front. So this completes our model C delta x, L delta x and the sources. Similarly you can have several elements like that. So in each of this element Vs and Is can be slightly different depending upon how the voltage and current is varying along the line. So this is the generic case. Then we can apply Kirchhoff's voltage law and Kirchhoff's current law. And dividing with delta x and delta x tending to zero, you get the differential forms. And this is what is called telegraphic equations. We can derive this from the sequence circuit. So, however, we are mostly interested in what happens uh, at the two ends rather than what happens in between. So, we take a very specific case of a short line that is what mostly we will be dealing with. A short line will be in which the length of the line is a fraction of a wavelength. So we can neglect all the variation of the field along this small transmission line in that case. So the whole width S is eliminated and there is no variation. So you can replace this integral by uh, area A which is given by the length of the line L times the width of the line S. So voltage source is given by J omega mu zero area times Hn. So th this will give the uh, mu zero Hn will be giving you the complete flux and J omega and this uh, flux phi will give you rate of change of flux in time domain. Similarly, the current, shunt current is L total length times J omega C into 
integral of 0 to s e y dy. So since e y is uniform, you replace this by L times s, small s, for the width of the line. Then you get a here and c, a equal to L, in L times s. So we got the values of uh, both sources. So as before, if we say that omega L is far less than the terminal impedances and 1 by omega C is far greater than the terminal impedances, we can neglect those capacitance and inductance. And now we have just uh, two sources, one representing anti field interaction and other anti field interaction and the two loads over there and we are interested in Vs, voltage across this and uh, voltage across this. So we solve for Vs that will be, you know, we can apply superposition theorem. First this uh, source, so total current is uh, this voltage divided by some of these currents. This voltage divided by some of the sorry some of the resistances multiplied by Rs will give you this voltage due to this source. Now from the other source where the current is divided across current through this branch is uh, Rl divided by Rs plus Rl. Then the source minus j omega C A. Ey multiplied by Rs to give this voltage. Similarly, on this side, this will be negative and this will remain the same. So, as before, you can see that uh, for the part related to electric field, on both ends. Uh, uh, the induced EMF is the same, whereas here it is of opposite direction and of different value, but from the magnetic field. So the general behavior is very similar to the near field crosstalk in terms of characteristic of the voltages at both ends. So that is end of that module. Thank you.